Welcome to an I Exist podcast. Our entire mission can be summed up in one phrase, becoming all that we are. It is our belief that fulfillment doesn't come from changing into things you aren't, but rather from becoming everything that you already are. And ultimately, we're here to press and empower you to lead lives that are full of fulfillment. We've dedicated this specific podcast to the dream, not to having the dream or even talking about the dream, but to living the dream. The reality is that there's a stark difference between having a dream and manifesting one. Here you'll gain insight and wisdom keys directly from some of the water walkers of our generation, dream practitioners, those who have decided to tread paths where there were none, to step out into only what they could see. Come take a peek into the minds of some who, from within, create our world's most magnificent realities. I'm the creator and host, Brian Farr, and this is the Living the Dream Podcast. Hey, welcome to the seventh episode of Living the Dream, the podcast. I am your host, Brian Farr. First of all, I hope you all are having the most productive of days. And if you aren't, I hope that through your action, this day becomes more productive than you ever imagined it would. Secondly, I appreciate you for joining me again today. And if it's your first time, I hope that you enjoy it and that you find value in what's being presented. Before I get started, I want to clarify the intention behind living the dream. In the intro, I state that here you'll be able to find wisdom keys, insight, principles, and even practical steps that will help you along your journey of living your dream. But I also wanna further clarify why I take an approach that probably comes off as a little bit deeper than just surface level, rather than just giving you steps of just what to do with your life. First of all, I don't know that I can always even define that for you. Sometimes the steps that you'll need to take, you'll have to search inwardly in order to figure out what you should do And if I can point you in any way that helps you obtain more of a knowledge of self, that journey alone will always eventually lead to you taking the steps that you need to take. So I can't always define for you exactly what those steps are. But even more than that, I wanted to make sure that this was a platform in which I'm not just handing you things again that say, here's what to do. And I not also partner with practical steps, the way to carry out your journey. And here's why that's important. What I am not interested in as a person is having you chase some external form of success and be inwardly unhappy or displeased or unfulfilled. And sometimes if I only give you that one side of the coin, again, which is some things that point to what to do, that type of success, you'll probably hear me say this a lot, that type of success is not long lasting. And it's my desire that if you would dare to prosper in life, that it would be something that lasts longer than you, that not only would you be able to pass down wealth, riches or whatever that comes naturally with success down to your offspring or wherever you want to place it, charity, whatever the situation. I would also want you to be able to transfer the way to have and to keep these things. And both sides of the coin are important. So not only will you get practical subject matter in which, again, sometimes it just may seem like I'm pointing a lot to what to do in a situation. But the aim is that there will always be a balance between the two. One without the other will always lead to an improper balance or an imbalance in someone's life in which. On one end, you could become super successful with me just giving you tools and direction on what to do. But again, you end up being unfulfilled. And for some of you trying to fill a bottomless hole of insecurity, so much so that you can't even enjoy riches, you can't even enjoy wealth. And to me, that's not the true definition of wealth, right? But if I go the other way around and we're only filling you with principle and things that would sometimes even be rightly considered spiritual without the outworking of those principles. You can remain full and that not reflect on the outside in which you're able to manifest that wealth into an outward thing. So I want to make sure that we're handling both sides. So a lot of the subject matter is going to sound deep. 
It's going to be inward pointing and some of it is going to sound very practical. But the goal is that both ends be covered so that we can have a proper balance in which we're not inwardly full and not outwardly fruitful. Or again, the other imbalance is having appearance of outward fruitfulness, but being empty on the inside. So I wanted to really set that intention before you so that even your expectation and understanding of a lot of the content would hopefully be clearer if it's not. I know a lot of it can be good information, but I also wanted to, again, just set the intention so that you could see where I'm coming from and why some of the subject matter is what it is. Again, I'm not interested in you just being able to amass a bunch of wealth and abuse people afterwards or just flex on your ex. Or go to a place that you can't handle and end up rotting on the inside while having a lot of material success. And I'm also not interested in you just learning a bunch of principle and insight and wisdom keys that you're not putting into action. And you're almost using that in a prideful way to assume that you are better than the next person and not ever, again, putting it into practice, not ever becoming actually fruitful. So we care about both ends here. So here's what I wanted to share with you today. Unfortunately, all of these podcasts due to a self-implemented time constraint are going to be very short of any type of master class level speech. But don't worry, at the end of this, I'll have an important announcement in which will grant us more time and opportunity to learn whatever we need to know in order to fully live out our dreams. So just stay tuned to that and look for that at the end. So listen, there's this large company that most of you, if not all of you, I'm guessing all of you have heard of. As a matter of fact, you've probably bought at least one item from this large manufacturer and brand. And they have a slogan that we probably, I'm assuming, all know. And it's a great slogan. It takes an extremely complicated and hard process for many and simplifies it in the smartest way. And if you don't know which company I'm talking about by now, I'll go ahead and tell you its slogan. That slogan is just do it. All right. I'm sure we all know, again, what company I'm talking about now. That's Nike. I wanted to talk about maybe something that could be drawn from that statement. Just do it. First of all, I believe it's a great statement. Again, it really, in a smart way, simplifies what processes that many of us make difficult all the time. And when you really think about it, it's a really powerful statement that just clarifies the idea that you should get out of your own way. You should almost not even think about it and just do it. And so even in this context, when it comes down to living the dream, applying that statement should mean just get out of your own way. Don't think about it. Just do it. It's simple until it isn't. And what happens when it's not that simple? I don't have the time enough to name all of the circumstances and situations that could make just doing it seem impossible. And I want to say just for the record, I do know that honestly, success, wherever you're trying to get to, is that simple. It really is that simple. Just do it. But simple doesn't always mean easy. And I think That's where we begin to question that statement as individuals. Well, is it really that simple? Well, yes, I'm telling you that it actually is that simple. But what I'm not saying is that it's easy. So I'm saying it's not necessarily easy to put your fears in the back of your mind, to get out of your own way, to release yourself from whatever circumstances may be hindering you to get over those hurdles. I'm not saying that it's necessarily easy. But success is that simple. And again, I just wanted to say that for the record. But what about when it's not that easy? What if it's not easy to just get out of my own way to get over that fear, to let go of these situations in order to just do it? Normally, when we find it hard to just do it, to begin to live out our dreams, we normally begin to ask ourselves a series of questions. One of those questions is, why is this happening to me? Right. As if we feel that life has given us some unjust treatment. And that's not to say that life hands us a bed of roses all the time. Trust me, I understand that many of you are going through unimaginable things. And so that even sometimes becomes a valid question. Why is this happening to me? And I almost named this podcast just that. Why is this happening to me? 
But I begin to think about it. And I think there's an even deeper question that we begin to really inwardly ask ourselves when we feel like we cannot, again, get over certain hurdles to make the choices we need to make, to make the decisions we need to make in order to, again, just live the dream truly. And that question is, what's wrong with me? We'll begin to ask ourselves, well, what's wrong with me that I just can't do it, that I just can't seem to get past this hurdle? that I just can't seem to overcome, that I just can't seem to get better. We begin to ask ourselves, but what's wrong with me? I saw another person do it. Nike made it clear as day how simple it is. Why can't I do it? What's, again, wrong with me? And so I just want to begin to answer some of those questions for you. Again, not in totality. This won't be a full gamut of answers, but I do want to add a little bit of some of my perspective to the questioning. And before I address the main actual issue, I do want to say to those who are asking in the question at this point in time, why is this happening to me? I want to say that your perspective in this matter is what's most important. And with a simple shift, not to, again, try to oversimplify this, but with a simple shift in perspective, you can open up a whole new world of possibilities. And so the way this is taught sometimes in success coaching and things like that, rather than putting a limit on something by making a statement, sometimes you can just ask a question and it'll open up a world of possibilities. And so I'll give you an example. You making a statement, and I've heard this example before, that you cannot afford something is an immediate limit on all possibility of you being able to get what it is you want. If you turn that statement into a question and change your perspective, as I said before, you have a whole world of possibility that begins to open up to you. Changing I can't afford that as a statement to how can I afford that now has changed the entire way you see your situation. And it begins to pull on the part of you that's more creative and problem solving and begins to put a demand on what you know and who you know and your skill. And again, the possibility of you getting it done in the same way. Many times when we're asking ourselves, why is this happening to me? What we should be asking is what is happening for me through this, in this, from this? And if you would just make that simple shift, it would open up your eyes again to another world of possibilities and implement an important question into your narrative, which is why. And it's important to begin to ask why in situations. It's always OK to ask why. Not that you'll always have an immediate answer, but when you ask yourself those things again, it will open up a whole new avenue of possibilities for which you can overcome and even begin to gain enough strength to go through if that's what's necessary. Or again, like I said before, enough strength or enough option for you to begin to overcome and get yourself out of situations that have victimized you. And now you've become an overcomer. And let me say this, maybe that's a shift you need to make again, while all of this rapid change is happening in our world with COVID-19. When you could ask yourself, why is this happening to me? Because this is not anything you started. You didn't contribute to the start of it. And so it's understandable how you can easily feel victimized by it. But in it, we can change our perspective and begin to say what's happening for me. And if you would just open up that world of possibility, you would see a greater strength in your own life. You would see a greater measure of resilience. And again, just an opportunity in what would naturally seem like a bunch of opposition. And so I wanted to start with that. But on to the questioning of what's wrong with me. I want to share a couple of things with you from my own personal experience. Writer, producer, artist, coach, and inspirational motivational speaker, Brian Farr takes us on a deep retrospective and introspective journey ranging from his childhood until life today that involves the question, will I live a life of significance or one of safety? Filled with experience gained wisdom and revelatory insights, a new home dares its readers to ask themselves the hard questions concerning their need to fit in. How far will you go? And will all the efforts you've made be worth it in the end? 
This perspective-shifting discourse is a must-read, and through its hard-hitting yet relatable, tear-jerking, and even at points comical nature may prove to be more of a life-changing event than just a good Sunday morning read. Get your physical copy or digital copy today at Amazon.com. And again, I'll be attacking this subject matter from one specific angle. So this won't be a full autopsy of the issue. So even if this is not a specific answer for you in particular, I know that you'll find something helpful throughout what's being said. So for the main issue, firstly, asking questions that point inwardly is not a bad thing. It can actually point to personal responsibility. When you begin to ask yourself questions that point out patterns and self-inflicted pain and blockages, when you ask questions that allow you to discover those things about yourself, the point is supposed to be that you're doing it from an empowering position, right? So you're pointing them out so that you can overcome them with the knowledge beforehand that I'm asking myself these questions because I know I have power to overcome them. But where we have to be careful is that sometimes there is a similar type of questioning that we need to differentiate that, again, is pointed inwardly, but it's actually a question that indicates self-doubt that comes from a low self-esteem or a low self-worth. And what's wrong with me is one of those questions. It's a self-defeating question, not a question that indicates personal responsibility. Again, those type of questions are empowering questions or they're coming from self-esteem. They're coming from control. They're coming from high self-worth or knowing that you're disciplined enough to do something about whatever the issue you're trying to discover is. So that's what we have to come to terms with first, that this is a self-defeating question that's normally not asked so that we actually figure out what problems or patterns may be present in our lives that we can overcome because we're empowered to do so. But rather, and that may be the case sometimes, but generally this question is normally used for us to victimize ourselves. And it's really a question that begins to beat up on us even more. It's a form of beating yourself up, but in question form. And this is not something we need to do. And I'll move quickly now, but I wanted to share a couple things with you again from my own experience and for some of you begin to actually answer that question and hopefully get us to a place to where we're actually defeating that self defeat. And just another note really quickly, these principles only work for those who want it and those who work them. They only work for those who want them and those who work them. I heard a definition of wisdom sometime recently in which an author was defining wisdom differently than information. And the difference between information and wisdom to this author was that gaining information is not enough. It's not transformative. You gained a lot of information in school that you didn't use. It was probably useless in the first place. But let's say you just didn't use it and you could have. Right. So it didn't become transformative because you didn't use the information. You don't move into, I would say knowledge, but he said wisdom. You don't move into that realm until the information actually becomes transformative after its use. So that's what makes a person wise. It's not just hearing instruction, but being able to follow it. It's not just hearing information, but being able to implement it. So let me share this story really quickly with you. When I was in my early 20s, and I'm not that old now, but this was at least 10 years ago. I wanted to begin to step out and begin to live my dream. And at the time, what I thought that meant was that I was going to need to leave the situation that I was in and pursue an opportunity that had opened up to me. And unfortunately, what happened through my attempt to leave, and I know I'm not going into great detail, but this is going to save time and energy for me to tell it this way and spare all parties involved. But I was told at the time that I was preparing to do what I felt like I needed to do and leave in a way that I would be nothing without that situation. As a matter of fact, I was literally told that I would be Tito leaving the Jacksons and it just wouldn't be the same anymore. And I took that very personally at the time. No offense to Tito, but uh, I definitely took offense to that at the time. 
But rather than listening to that quote unquote advice to remain where I was, it actually became fuel to go do what I felt like I needed to do. And let me tell you what happened. It didn't happen to be the greatest experience when I did leave because I was fresh to a new side of life that I had never experienced before. I was experiencing things I had never experienced before. And so there was a part of it that was hell to experience for lack of better wording. But one thing I will never take away from my experience is that I gained a rapport and confidence and belief that I could not have had had I stayed back and listened to what was told to me. And just to be clear, what I mean by belief is self-belief. It took me entering into a different situation to see that all of the smarts or skills and gifts that had been developed in me were no less potent or effective anywhere else I went and probably at certain points could have been more appreciated. And so I was able to see myself apart from what I could have believed was just quote unquote Michael in the gang just helping me to look good. Sorry, Tito. But if I would have wrongly believed that outright lie 10 plus years ago, I still could have been the person today who's asking themselves what's wrong with me. And I'll tell you why. Because again, it gave me the opportunity to see myself apart from a situation that could have defined me differently than what I was. And when I walked away, I was able to see myself in a better light, to see myself in a better depiction of who I actually was, which was way better than what was being presented to me at the time. And so here's the question that I want to ask every one of you who is asking yourself wrongfully, what's wrong with me? Why can not I just do it? Why can not I just overcome this? Why can not I just get myself out? Here's the question I have to ask you. In what ways have you proved to yourself that you can? Listen, it's super important that at some point we begin to build, again, a rapport with ourselves a confidence in ourselves, a trust of ourselves. I believe it was Jay-Z that said that even when he was living a life that was beneath the one he's living now, a life that was wrong, that was tied into the streets and that involved him doing things that he knew at the time he wasn't supposed to do inwardly. He knew he wasn't supposed to be doing it, but did not trust himself enough to know that there was a better way. He speaks in a way of saying that he knew that there was a better way inwardly. His soul, his spirit was speaking to him saying, this is not you. This is not right. There's a better way. But he had not formed enough trust with himself in order to get himself out of the situation at first. And it took a while for him to gain that trust with himself before he was able to execute on a different path and get himself to where he is now. And so it's the same with all of us. We have to build up ways that we begin to trust ourselves or else we become too codependent and believing of the lies that are being filtered to us through other people's mouths, through our circumstances. Even your circumstances can lie to you and show you something that's beneath you and lower than you. And if you dare believe it and don't begin to build up the confidence that you need to escape it within the reality of who you actually are. Because you don't know what you actually are until you begin to step out into some foreign territory and begin to test and try out who it is you are. I see it as like getting a new spacesuit, as if you're becoming a part of Elon Musk's new team to go to the moon and back. But they've created a new spacesuit that needs to be tested out again with as much testing that I'm sure is possible with just someone walking outside down the street in that spacesuit, that spacesuit has to be put in an environment that will build trust that it can survive and hold up in outer space. And then it'll be ready to go. And so it is the same with us. When we want to go to new, higher positions in life, when we want to continue to become the better that we know we are or know that is possible on the inside, we have to do things to begin to try out and gain trust in who we are along the way. And so again, I'm asking you, those of you who are asking yourselves, what's wrong with me? I'm asking you this, what have you done to prove to yourself that you can? 
And I am imploring you to begin to take even small steps that you begin to build rapport, that you begin to develop a self-confidence that you can get yourself out of codependent situations, situations in which people are telling you you'll be nothing without them, situations in which you think that you'll be nothing without a particular place or thing or person, whether it's drugs all the way down to a job or a spouse or anything else, that self-doubt, that unbelief, that self-defeating attitude can be defeated when you step out and see what you are apart from it. A literal Drake lyric just came to my head where he said, I had to let go of us to show myself what I could do. I can't remember what song that's a part of, but the concept is the same. In what ways are you proving to yourself that you can? And again, this is small steps even that will prepare you for the actual flight, for the journey into the dream. Again, going back to the Elon Musk space team example, it's tested before it's launched off into space. And the same, you have to do things that prepare you to where you gain trust in the suit, that you gain trust in yourself so that you can begin to walk into the dream, take the journey into the dream. So what ways are you proving to yourself that you can? Here's simple things that you can do. First of all, don't take for granted what you have already done. You're going to have to intentionally look back on the things that, again, maybe a lot of other people have done it. So you overlook it, you know, like finish school or get a job, period, or that you started the workout routine, that you begin to take care of yourself a little better in a certain way. Whatever ways that you can find and build up a little faith and a little confidence that you can take another new step and then begin to take more little steps. Brick by brick, little by little, before you know it, you will have gained enough rapport with yourself. But the problem is if you won't take the first step, if you won't take any leap of faith at all, even if it's a small one, you can never gain that trust with yourself. If you can never push yourself to start something, which may be the small step, you will never push yourself to begin to finish things, which is a larger step. But if you can't push yourself along the ways, again, to build the rapport, to build the confidence, to build the self-esteem within yourself, you will never escape the situations that are binding you. And I don't say all of this to say that's what's quote unquote wrong with you. I'm giving you an alternative question to ask so that you can begin to open up another world of possibilities for yourself and create a different cycle in which you are getting better, in which you are chasing the dreams, in which you are beginning to become what you know you were always meant to be. But you have to build that within yourself. And that's going to take the small steps that are going to build the trust again and the confidence that will kill the low self-esteem. Once you know that you can make the climb on your own, you'll no longer have the problem of getting there. But that takes time. And so, again, all I'm imploring you to do, all I'm asking you or all I'm instructing is that you find ways to begin to build that trust within yourself. I hope you got something out of that. So listen, before I end this podcast, I want to let you know about the opportunity that I was mentioning earlier. And I want to happily, proudly say that this week I'm going to begin to open up opportunities for you to be coached by me directly. And so here's the advantages of that. What becomes difficult, as I kind of described a little earlier, is that it's hard to really cover all angles of any subject matter when you're doing it on a broad forum. And what coaching actually allows is custom tailored experiences, wisdom, advice, insight that doesn't all have to be filtered through a general message. I do trust that Grace is always doing its job to filter to the right people, the right information at the right time, and for people to hear what they need to hear through what I'm saying. But there's a deeper level. And I also want to curate a custom tailored experience in which you don't necessarily have to filter through the information that you think you need, but what you need can come directly to you intentionally. So what's going to be important if you don't already is to find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter and follow me. And that way, when I'm offering the services, you won't ever miss out on those time periods and maybe the special things that'll come along with it that'll get announced through those platforms. Again, I want to thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I pray that your way is made prosperous 
And until next time.